Hello, welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Schmidt, registered dental assistant here at Glidewell Dental. And today we're throwing some shade. <laughs> oh my goodness. Actually, it's a good kind, right? We're throwing it back to one of your brightest episodes. That's right. Where you're talking about how to pick shades and then how to communicate that to the lab. Exactly. And Megan, your future is so bright, I should be wearing shades. Oh goodness. <laughs> well, let's get real for a minute. Okay. I think shade taking is very important. The lab needs to know, and we need to communicate this between the doctor, the patient, and our dental laboratory. Okay, and so what shade do you think I am? You know, this is going to take a while. Oh, give me a break. Roll tape. <laughs> what are shades made up of, and why are they so important? It should be as simple as matching a tab to a tooth and writing it on the lab slip, but it really isn't. We aren't simply trying to communicate a single hue, or color as we say more often. We are also attempting to distinguish the shade's chroma. Now this is the level of saturation in that hue, as well as the shade's value. This is the level of the white or dark overall. Let's look at the Vita Classical Shade Guide. Now, it's one of the most popular shade guides used in dentistry, but it doesn't communicate all three of these ideal parameters to select the shade, specifically the shade's value. The Vita Classical Guide is still a great tool to use to assist us in the decision-making process, so I'm going to ask you to get a little crazy and do something just off the wall. I want you to take all the tabs out of it and rearrange them. Contrary to the alphabetical order that it's set up in, when talking about shades on the Vita Guide, we all know that B1 holds a brighter hue than A1 or A2. The new arrangement of your tabs when replacing them should be, from left to right, B1, A1, B2, D2, A2, C1, C2, D4, A3, D3, B3, A3.5, B4, C3, A4, and C4. Now that we have them in descending order, it could be assumed that it would be easier to reach a shade decision. Well, probably not. Now that the free space between shades has decreased, we are mathematically less likely to notice the slight differences between neighboring tabs. So, where do we go from here? Shade guides are now being designed to make them easier to work with. The Vita 3D Master Shade System allows the value of a hue to be selected by first grouping colors and then choosing the value in each specific color group, sort of like a drop-down menu. Uh, I like to call this method tabbed browsing. Another option is the Vita Bleach Guide. This guide has only one additional shade tab than the Vita Classical Guide, but the colors are spread out on a broader spectrum actually exactly twice the coverage as the classical guide. Now this makes it less complicated for our eyes to notice the difference. True to its name, however, this guide is best used for patients who are involved in chairside or take-home whitening procedures. The Vita Linear Guide first groups and then separates tab groups according to the value before hue and chroma are taken into consideration. Now, the Vita Easy Shade Advanced Digital Shade Guide takes much of the legwork out of shade taking by getting rid of the need for proper lighting in the operatory. Plus, it keeps results stored in its memory bank to be pulled up at a later time. Now, there is one more shade parameter that I haven't discussed yet. This, of course, is our prep shade. It's also known as the Denton shade, or more commonly, the stump shade. Ivoclar makes a couple great prep shade guides that have been more of the standard of dentistry worldwide. These guides are known as the stump material and natural dye material guides. The main difference between these guides is similar to the difference between the Vita Classical and the 3D Master guides. The natural dye guide has a wider shade spectrum, making it easy for the eye to pick up the differences. The user can even fit these guides together to make one master prep guide. It also won't be a problem to use a standard Vita guide or a similar system as long as the system that is being used is clearly noted on the photos and in the RX form. Before starting the shade taking process, we need to know if the patient has been bleaching or is continuing to bleach. Now, it's recommended to wait at least seven days since the last bleaching treatment has been administered. However, a full two-week waiting period would probably be more ideal. This is due to the rehydration process and the possibility of the teeth bouncing back to a lesser shade. Now, once you are certain that the shade will stay constant, you can continue with the shade process. Now, I'm a firm believer in the buddy system when taking shades. This is because no two sets of eyes will see the same thing proper lighting of the site, nearby colors of your patient's clothing, lipstick, skin tone, hair, and even objects nearby in the room are going to make us see everything differently. In fact, men, you are statistically 10 times more prone to color blindness than your female colleagues. So, enlist the help of your assistant, your doctor, a staff member, 
even hand your patient a mirror, and let's get a collective opinion on the proper shade to proceed with. So we've now collected enough data and photographic evidence to complete the RX form and submit for fabrication. Now my doctor has asked me to print photos that we have taken, if they are useful, and attach them to the RX form. Think of your photography as a secondary RX form, and don't hesitate to draw specifics onto them to get your message understood. Get detailed and point out things such as halo effects, decalcification spots, and any other anomalies that will aid in a lifelike restoration being fabricated. Moving on to the RX form, it is important that exact details about the shade are presented here. To start, leave a space and write, see attached photos. Plus, highlight that area if you need to. In the space provided on the form to write the shade, it's helpful to notate the shade as well as the guide you acquired the shade from. Getting into this habit will be especially helpful when you are using a bleaching guide. This is due to the large number of bleaching guides available to choose from, but also when using plastic denture tooth shade guides or less popular guide brands. There is no such thing as providing too much information on the prescription form. The majority of shade-related phone calls that our technical advisors place or answer is due to the lack of important shade information between the practitioner and the laboratory. How's that for throwing shade, Megan? That was a great episode. Thank you so much, Will. Not a problem, Megan. And like I said before, it's all about communication. This subject is no different. It's true. So for this episode, I think we're all done, and I'd like to communicate with you that we are so appreciative of you watching. So on behalf of everyone here at Glybal Dental, thank you for tuning in. And we'll meet you right back here next time. Oh, goodness.